Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Powerful Man Show. I'm your host, Doug Holt, with my co-host, Tim, the powerful man, Matthews. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to announce uh, you when you come in for your UFC, your first UFC fight. Um, I'll be your announcer bringing you in. Yeah, yeah, that would be fun. I was uh, doing some more grappling and fighting and stuff yesterday with that, that guy I told you I'm practicing with, so... It's kind of funny when you first get punched in the face. It, it's a bit, a bit weird, isn't it? Different than you think, right? That sounds obvious, but it's actually, I actually enjoyed it. Um, I think I enjoyed it. He didn't punch me very hard, so that's probably why I enjoyed it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but the other part is you've just got to be so in the moment, right? You've got to be so present, and it, and it fired me up. But then you've got to maintain composure within the fire. And then, you know, it's crazy. Man, it's just so, at least I think, right, it's so hard from a fitness standpoint, from a composure standpoint, technical, everything, right? Um, but anyway, the, what I'd love to talk about is the idea of radical responsibility. So what I'm going to do is just dive in. And um, so this is a pattern that we often see in the men when they first start working with us, right? And um, I'm curious whether any of you guys listening encountered something similar. I know I used to struggle with this, and there's an amazing, a really great book um, that I read a year or two ago, in fact, that I always revisit. And it just reminds me of some of these distinctions and principles. And anyway, what I see these men, the men doing when they first come to us is they're they abdicate responsibility, right? They're abdicating responsibility in their life in most of five territories, quite frankly. Well, you know, I can't work out because the kids wake up at five. Okay, cool. Could you get up earlier? Could you go to bed earlier so you wake up early so you can work out? Uh, you know, I don't want to build a big team because I've had a big team before and, you know, you just can't trust people. That, you know, employees are, are a nightmare. Okay, well, it depends on who you hired and how you lead them, right? And but anyway, there's just these excuses that that tend to come out, and this level of acceptance that it's just the way it is, right? And the reality is, you are going to hold people accountable to the level that you hold yourself. The standard to which you live your life, the standard to which you operate, is going to be the standard to which you will hold other people. It just is. You will not, and the people in, well, let me say a different way, the five territories will not rise above the standard to which you are going to hold yourself. So I'll use an easy one. Now, we've, we've brought on, um, obviously, the advisors on the team, um, amazing team, advise the men, and we're in the conversation every day about them being able to have these conversations with amazing men that are curious about whether we can help and provide the insight. And by default in providing the insight, you, you've got to be able to lead these leaders because the men that talk to us, you know, they're, they're leaders, they're, they're amazing men. And a lot of them are in the community and people look up to them, right? And they have businesses and they manage people and they lead people. And like I said, pillars of communities. And for the most part, they keep it very private, the struggle that they're going through personally. Because if people, they worry, right? If people found out, what will people think of them? They struggle with feeling like an imposter. Hey, everyone thinks I've got all the answers and I've got it all together, but really I'm struggling in this particular area and nobody knows. They walk into the office and the secretary, secretary says, oh, how's Amelia? Yeah, she's great. Yeah, really, we're arguing, right? So anyway, the, the advisors, in order for them to be able to provide the best level of leadership to the men that that we speak with every day and provide insight with, they have got to be leading themselves personally in that way, right? Working out, uh, showing up with honesty and clarity in their relationships. It's why one of our core values, we have four, as you know, one of them is we live a fuck yes life, which is all about we live the message before we quote unquote sell the message. We are very big on living it. We live from the inside out. Are we perfect? No. But we're in the conversation and we're always supporting each other to live from the inside out. 
And I really want to speak to it because I think it's very easy to, for people to look at the results other people have, be it in the marriage or be it in the business or wherever it is, and think that maybe they've got there through either luck or they've done something a little bit deceitful. Yet, for the most part, these guys and the biggest shifts for the men that we work with occur when they take radical responsibility for their life. They raise their standard, and by default, it raises the standard of the people around them, people in the business, right? Employees that they have complaints about. Suddenly, the complaints go away because they stop trying to save them and instead start to lead them. You know, we have a saying, lead, don't save. They start to lead them, and they lead them by example. They see through the excuses. They see through the bullshit. And instead, they live with such a level of clarity and decisiveness and ownership. There's just nowhere to hide. It's it's the circle, the straight line versus the circle. Which one are you going to take? Are you going to go around the houses or are you going to go straight there? A to B or A, D, C, E, and then back to B, right? Straight line. So anyway, I, I know you're big on this. It's something I admire about you. You very much um, take the straight line. You, you very much apply this. Um, obviously, you know, you're not perfect like nobody is, but I, I would say for the most part, for the vast majority of the time, and this is how you operate. Yeah. I think there's a lot of things that come to play with this, right? Um, I think it's a great topic and one we can do a number of uh, podcasts on an example to drive it home is, um, one of my pet peeves is people showing up late, late for meetings or late. You know, if you say you're going to be here at 8 AM, I expect you to be here at 8 AM. Right. I'm kind of that. Um, I think it was Vince Lombardi, the famous football coach. Uh, I think it was him, but not, you know, guys listening to this will correct me, I'm sure. But um, early is on time, on time is late. And that's kind of something that was imparted to me early in my business career, right? Even as in my teenage years. And that's something I've embodied. However, if I show up, so Tim and I meet at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time to record these podcasts for you guys. If I show up at 8.15, yet expect Tim to be on time all the time, that's that's incongruent, right? Why would Tim ever follow that lead? Why would he even <laughs> take any consideration to me being upset for him being late if I'm constantly late? It doesn't make sense. Another way I think is easy for our guys, Tim, to understand is your kids, right? For you guys that are fathers, you know, if you're sitting there and you're saying to your kids, you know, don't chew with your mouth open yet you're doing it, they're not going to listen to you. They might a little bit because you're an authority, you're authoritative there, but they're not going to really listen to you when you're not around. They're going to do whatever, they're going to do exactly what dad does. Your employees and your staff do the same thing, guys. Cool. I'll do what the owner or the CEO does when he's around, but when he's not, eh, I'm not doing that. I'm going to do exactly what he's doing, right? Because he's the example. He's climbed the tree, so to speak. So the standards that we set for ourselves hold the container or is the limit to the container of the standards for others. Said another way, when we have a standard of ourselves of doing things really well, that's as high as it can rise for the people around us. This is why a lot of companies lose A players, even though the pay is good, because the leader is playing at a B level. They'll leave. A players want to play with A, a players. When I played sports competitively, you, know, you wanted to play on the best team with the best players. You wanted to win. But you didn't want to win with the, you know, bad players. You wanted to win with great players. And ever when you go down, you do, you know, for me, it was soccer or, or football across the world. When you do a scrimmage with guys that just aren't that good, you play to that level. Unless your standards are so high, and then you just outshine everybody. Right. And then the rest of the guys start playing better. And this happens in every area of our life. You know, here it is. As I said, we start recording these at 8 a.m. My kids have swim lessons. 30 minutes. We believe the best place for our kids to go have swim lessons is about 40 minutes from my house where we live. We moved out to the country, have more property, you know, during the pandemic, like a lot of people did. I, after we're done recording this, I'm going to go watch my kids swim and swim lessons. Why? My standard is to be the father that's at the events. I surround my, myself with people like you, Tim, who support that standard. They understand that's my standard and they're supportive. 
Things don't fall through the cracks. Things get taken care of during that time. And I, as a father, as you said, get to live that fuck yes life, which is being at the events with my kids. Now it's swim lessons, right? Yeah, what's the big deal, Doug? My kids notice every time I'm at swim lessons. Every time they comment at the end of the day, we ask, what's your best moments? Even my one-year-old will be two in January. So I'll just call her two-year-old. She comments on it. Daddy's coming to watch me swim. She gets so excited. She's bouncing off the walls. Will she remember this when she's older? No, probably not. But she'll remember how she feels about her father. And that's a standard I set. Because I set that standard, the people around me who follow my actions, and guess what, guys? You as business leaders especially, people are watching. People you don't know are watching. I'm creating a container for them to do something similar. Now, for them, they may not, you know, going to swim lessons may not be their thing, right? Maybe it's their fitness. Maybe it's going to the gym consistently. Maybe it's in their business. Maybe it's going and doubling revenue, whatever it is. You're setting these standards in this container for the people around you because they're watching. And you can't effectively hold somebody accountable for actions you're not willing to do or can't do. It's very difficult. You can do it in a very logical way, you know, almost like if you're an engineer and here's the project, I just don't understand what you're doing. It's not about knowledge. It's not about knowledge. Standards have nothing to do with knowledge. Now, obtaining knowledge and having a standard with that, I will always grow. That's one of my standards. So I'm always learning things. That's different. Really what we're talking about here is your actions. Classic thing. Do your actions speak louder than your words? Yes or no? Don't give me a story, yes or no. Do they or don't they? And that's a way you can look at this here, uh, whether it be the advisors, the advisory team, Tim, when you're talking to them, leading the men in the conversations. You know, as men come to us, we get a ton of guys, if you guys come into us asking for insights and our advisors, that's what they do. And they have to lead. They have, our advisors are expected to lead their lives the way that we teach the guys to. One of the first things Tim does even in, in interviewing somebody, like right now, transparently, we are looking for an A player in operations, a get stuff done person who can manage projects, run fast, who has a passion for helping men, right? We're looking for that person and we're interviewing. And Tim was the first person that does the interviews. Tim's asking, what are your goals? What are your dreams? Above and beyond this position, what do you want? And he's figuring out what their standards are too at the same time. And we're raising that bar for this person because we're not just hiring bodies. This is a movement, a movement to change the world. This is what we believe it to be. And therefore, we're hiring men who are going to assist us in helping more men. Because when we help you guys, we also help your families. And that's important to me. That's really freaking important to me. It's important to Tim. It's important to the rest of the team. We get that what we do is make a difference when you guys go into our program. We take that very personally. And so as we're looking for this operations person, this person to step in and be a taskmaster and deal with all my wildness, right? As an entrepreneur, we're also looking at this person and say, hey, these are our company standards, period. When you come in here, you're playing at a high level with A players. Like the people we hire in every position are winners in that position. And here are the things that we have, right? Some of our other standards are we call it out. If you see somebody doing something wrong or dropping the ball, you call it out and you address it with them immediately. You don't talk behind their back. You don't go to somebody else and say, oh, John's not doing this or John's not doing that. No, you go to John. And you talk with John. You talk with John immediately. Why? That's our standard. Because we clean things up immediately at the powerful man. Just like we tell the men to do in their marriages. And these guys are the standards that you set. As a, as a guy who formerly used to go into companies as a consultant or an interim CEO, I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, a company cannot grow greater than its leadership. Usually it's the psychology of the leadership. It just doesn't. That's why leaders continue to grow in all areas. Relationships, business skills, psychology, leadership. The great ones are always growing. Always growing. It's the ones that think they know it all or stagnant or what are they going to think of me if I find out I'm growing? Those are the guys that have problems. One of our biggest referral bases for the powerful man, the courses we do are business leaders, right? Because when they talk and they say, you know, no one wants to talk about their marriage not working or other areas that aren't working. But when a guys do share it with other A players, 
they get nothing but compliments. Like, that's so awesome that you're doing this. I could do something like this or another area I want to work on. It's not judgment because they're all in a growth mindset because that is the standard. And when you raise your standards, you allow the people around you to raise theirs. And whether they admit it or not, everybody wants to raise the bar. Some people say no because they're too scared. They're too scared because they've raised the bar before and fallen short. But like, you know, a jumper in the Olympics, you know, when you see a high jumper in the Olympics hit the bar, what happens? They all clap. Guess what they do? They reset that frigging bar and he tries again. And he tries again until he lands it. And even his competition celebrates him. In fact, this last Olympics, if you guys were watching it, the two men's gold medalist high jumpers agreed and jumped the same amount. They jumped the same amount and said, hey, look, this is where we are. Like, can we both get a gold? And yeah, they didn't argue with each other because when your standards are that high, you're playing. We're soaring with eagles at that point. The eagles don't fight each other. The problem is when you're down there with the crows and the bottom of the barrel and you decide that's where your standard is, that's where the fights happen. That's where the bickering happens. It's not lonely at the top. That's, that's BS. That's something people tell themselves so they can play small. It's actually a lot of people at the top. I'm not at the top, <laughs> but I'm looking up and I'm seeing all these guys that I know that are at the top and I'm, their standards are higher than mine. And I'm raising mine. I'm consistently working on it. Not only in my business, but also my marriage. My wife's on board. I'm like, hey, what are our standards? Let's revisit this. Let's keep raising the bar on what we can do. And for a lot of us, it's unlearning things, patterns of behavior. For some of us, it's just believing what's possible. And that's the beauty of the brotherhood or the inner circle, our mastermind programs is you're now around a group of guys who have high standards. And you're the sum of the five people you spend the time with. Imagine spending your time with 50 eagles that are flying fast and flying high and want to help you. And if everybody's raising their standards, that's where it comes in. Uh, so another great book I was reading called The Score Takes Care of Itself. Read that, Doug? No, I haven't. Bill Wall. I'm sure you've heard of Bill. You heard of oh, Bill yeah, Walsh? absolutely. Yeah. So maybe 5% of the way through it, 10% of the way through, not, not very far. But I'm at a point in the book where he's walked into this failing franchise, which obviously is the 49ers, and they're just literally failing. And all he's doing right now in the book is raising the standard. He walked in and the gym had loads of old crappy weights in there. The, the hot water in the changing rooms wasn't really that warm. It was kind of lukewarm, wasn't running very well. The you know pictures in the reception area, some of them were up, some of them weren't. And he's talking about right now, all he's doing is raising the standard. And it's the point in the book where I think Joe Montana, is, is that the famous player? Joe Montana, Montana? yeah. And Jerry yeah, Rice. So, yeah. Yeah, so now of, he's, yeah. he's turning up for training. The guy that continues doing the runs after practice finishes, right? Jerry Rice. His standards higher. What does it do for the rest of the team? Raises a standard. I get goosebumps talking about this. And then he starts to put them in a, a, like suits before they show up to a game and they, they're expected to show up on game day looking the part, right? Feeling the part, looking the part. It's the standard. There's a famous story from Alex Ferguson, famous soccer manager, football manager in the, U, in the UK, managed Manchester United. Playing in a cup final against Liverpool, he said, um, "You know, we turned up to Wembley that day, walked down to the pitch in our in our suits. Uh, Liverpool was stood there on their side of the pitch, dressed in cream beige suits made by Giorgio Armani, with these Ray Ban sunglasses on, all dressed a little bit different, all caring about more so rather than looking the part. They were just looking a bit." They just didn't look professional. It looked laxidaisical. Showed up in one guy having his button, uh, top button undone, another guy having it done. One guy's tie a bit thinner, one guy's tie a bit looser. And just this lax, how he described it, this laxidaisical approach to the game. He said, right there and then, I knew that we had them. Because he looked to the other side of the pitch where his players were, all in these like dark gray suits, all looking the same, all looking the part. The energy was different. Everything was different. 
It was like, I knew it. There and then, we'd won the game. It's all standards. Standards, standards, standards. And it's so easy. We talk about, I mean, it's, it's so easy to, to apply this to your life. You can do it right now. We, as the guys come into the activation method and we continue working with them, we talk about the idea of a bucket, right? And having holes in your bucket. Often the guys that come to us, you know, they're pouring more water in the bucket, expecting it to overflow, be it overflow with money or energy or sex or admiration, whatever it is, right? What they don't realize is they've got holes in the bucket. The holes are the leaks in their standards, whether it's the broken promises to the wife, whether it's the fact they're not working out and they're, they're not looking after the body and they're eating crap and they're drinking too much or they are pretending to be a superhero at work and take everything on themselves, whatever it is, there are holes in their bucket. The water never rises and they pour more and more water in. They turn up the pressure on the tap. The tap is flowing. They're exhausted and they're not getting the return. And it isn't because of the effort. It's because there's holes in their bucket. There are leaks in their standard. When in fact, all they could do is hit the pause button, look at where the leaks are, plug the holes. They could turn the tap down. And guess what? The bucket will rise. It will overflow. Well, you and I just uh, two days ago, were talking to a guy, uh, very successful. And he said, look, I don't tell this story very much, but just a number of years ago, I had a very successful business. There were leaks and it caused me to almost be homeless with four kids. He changed his standards of what was acceptable in his life. And now a million dollars in his bank account, plus millions in investments was his bare minimum. He's there a couple of years later, all because his standards just changed. Now that's financial, right? And there's reasons, you know, obviously being homeless with kids that can really trigger a man. The point is he had so many leaks in his bucket he was making a lot of money in his business, but not home. But we also do this in our marriages, guys. What are our standards? What's your standard for the way you want to be treated as a man? What's your standard for the way that you're going to treat your wife? What's your standard for your marriage? See, my wife and I, we have standards very specific on how we behave in public or at parties. I'm a, I'm a sarcastic guy. I love sarcasm. I was born, born on sarcasm, as I, as I joke about. But I never put my wife down in front of other people. Like that's just not that's not our standards. Now, when I first got married, I did because that's the way I was raised. That's when my dad did it, right? He was always joking and making fun of people, my mom and everybody else. I thought that was the way, even into adulthood, right? That's the crazy thing. But my wife and I decided collectively that eh, that's not the standard of which we want to run our relationship and our marriage. So we changed it. Same thing with me, right? The way I think there's standards I want to be how I want to be represented with my wife. My wife never talks negatively about me and our marriage in front of anybody, period. That's my standard. If there's things going on in my marriage that aren't working, she needs to come to me, not her friends, not her girlfriends or anything else. Standard. And that solves a lot of problems quickly. And it's where else are your standards? You know, go back to your analogy, Tim, here with the 49ers, and you alluded to this. And I when I was playing soccer in college, one of the assistant coaches who was a professor was also a lineman, uh, excuse me, was a referee in the a linesman in the NFL, National Football League. And he's the one that told me, he said, look, he told the team this. He said, because he, he just got back from practice of the 49ers or was there and said, look, I saw this happen. When they run a play at the 49ers, Jerry Rice, this is at the top of his career, number one, I've talked about this in the podcast, number one receiver, so in football, if you guys don't know the receiver, the quarterback throws the ball to him. Number one, every guy wants to be number one. These guys are all elite athletes. In practice, he runs a play. All the guys kind of walk or light jog back. He runs the play again every time. Every time. He's the number one guy. He doesn't need to do that. He's in great shape. Right? He's got a contract. Nah, no big deal. No, his standard is excellence. We talk about this in the Powerful Man Movement with our programs. Our programs are amazing. But we always ask the question every week, are they excellent? And if the answer ever comes back that our programs aren't excellent, we start to put the things in place to make them that way. Excellence is our standard. It's not good, better, best, right? as much of us do in business. It's excellence or nothing. Let's hit excellence. 
And that's our standard. And because that's our standard, we keep the capacity at the alpha reset event, the capacity at our other events, we keep the, the capacity very small because that's excellence. We can deliver excellence consistently every time at those levels. Again, horrible business decision in terms of scalability. If you wanted to scale it, we'd have a thousand men. We have over a thousand guys that want to come to the events. Cool. We could just do it and charge the money and make a lot of money. That's not excellence. We can't deliver excellence. We can deliver really good there. Probably great, but not excellence. And so where is your standards, guys? Where's your standards? What's your standard for being a husband? What's your standard for, for what you accept in your marriage and how to be treated? How are you treating other people? What's your standard in your health? I can tell you what your standard is in your fitness. Go look in the mirror. That's your standard. That is your standard. You get to choose if that's acceptable and if you want to raise the bar or not, but that's your standard. What's your standard for your value in the marketplace? Open up your bank account right now. Look at your investments. That's your standard. What's your standard in in your marriage. If it's not working, that's your current standard. It's time to make a shift. It's time to make a drastic move here. Right? These things are easier. Our, our physical body is the easiest one to look at because your standard is where you're at. And yeah, you can come up with all kinds of excuses, but if you want to accept responsibility for your life, then you get to look at these things. Go step on a scale. Go do a workout that's really tough, a test. We have the guys the option when they go to the activation method of taking a fitness test. Why? Because we want to see what their standard is. We want them to see what their standard is. And they have categories they can fall in. And it doesn't matter where your standard is today. I mean, it does. But what I care about, guys, is where your sta- where's your standard going? Are you raising it? Or are you settling? That's the question. Tim, I love this topic and I love how much you're doing in it and the leadership styles that you've taken on and really brought it to me and the rest of the team. You guys probably don't know this, but Tim has been studying leadership deeply for a long time. He passes it on to the men going through the program and passes it on to the people who work in the movement, the powerful man. Um, and Tim's constantly raising the standards from which we've jumped for. So I appreciate that about you, Tim. Gentlemen listening, guys, look at where your standards are now. And as Tim was saying, how can you raise those standards? What do you get to do? Are you soaring with the eagles? Or are you scavenging and fighting with the crows? And if you're with the crows, it's time to start rising up, guys. In all areas, your five areas, right? That's self, health, wealth, relationships, and business. Where are you? Get honest with yourself and then start to raise those standards for you which will effectively raise the standards for those around you because you guys are leaders. Gentlemen, we're always in your corner. Always want best for you, but in the moment of decision, we cannot do the action for you. You got to do this. Write it down now. Where are you in those five areas? What of those five key territories, self-health, wealth, relationships, and business, where are you with the crows? And where are you with the eagles? And we find yourself with the crows are you willing to do what it takes to be an eagle? I had to face some really tough decisions for me when I did this analysis years ago, but that caused the difference between me succeeding in business and then succeeding in business and having a kick-ass marriage and great people around me like Tim, like Arthur, like Mark, Ryan, all the other people. I won't say your name, everybody on the team. That's your decision. Soar with the Eagles, have people around you who are supporting you and aren't judging you for being a crow because they want to pull you up or aren't judging you with being an eagle by yourself, but a group of people that are going to soar with you and help you raise that bar. Cause you can't buy back time guys. You know, this, you can't buy back time. Today is the only day you have. And tomorrow will be the only day you have. You get to do it today. Gentlemen, we're always in your corner, head over to the free Facebook group. For the powerful man, I'd love to hear where your guys feel your standards are and how you're applying this to your life and your business. Join the over 3,000 other guys that are in that group that are talking about these conversations that matter. Tim and I are going to start doing some free webinars in that group and free trainings for you guys, specifically as we go into the new year. But you can't get them unless you're in the group. You can't get them unless you are in the group. So be active so you get those alerts. It's not on me to get them to you. If you want to be there and you want to show up and you want to get the information, we'll do that for you. 
Guys, thanks so much. We'll see you next time on The Powerful Man Show.